Hello, my name is Benjamin Bernier. I am the pastor of Providence Reform Episcopal Church here in Corpus Christi, Texas. And I'm starting a series of videos addressing some common theoretical and philosophical questions, hoping that you find them helpful. The most common theological question searched for on the internet is who created God? And this does not surprise me, since it is a very important question which naturally comes to our minds when we think about God, the world, and ourselves. In fact, as any Christian parent will tell you, this is a question which Christian, which children often ask their parents. As a father of seven, I can assure you that children are capable of formulating the most profound and difficult questions. So, if you're a Christian and a parent or a teacher, this answer may be helpful for you also. The Bible begins with the following assertion. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Genesis 1, 1. Okay, that takes care of the origin of the universe according to Christian theology and belief. But what about God? Who created him? In answering my children, I first tried to help them understand the presuppositions and implications of this question. The question, who created God, presupposes that God is a creature, like us. But is that so? Let's think a little bit about this. A little reflection shows that God cannot be a creature like us. We are creatures who exist in space and time. Like everything else, in space and time, we must have an origin or a cause in time, a creator. This is why we celebrate birthdays, for example. Every person must have a birthday because otherwise they would have been there forever, being the cause of their own existence. But we know that that is not so. So every creature like us requires a cause for its origin in time, a creator. But, but what if we are not sure if something is or not a creature like us? Would it need to have a cause outside of itself necessarily? Let us consider, for example, the universe. Is the universe a creature? Did time, matter, and space always exist? Or were these things brought into being by something or someone else, as the Bible says? When we ask about the origins of everything, we touch upon a very subtle and difficult question, a fundamental question. How and why space and time ever came into being? Did they come out of nothing? Why is there something rather than nothing? These are very good fundamental questions, which, by the way, are philosophical and theological in scope, not scientific questions. Science is a study of things which are open to scientific examination, things that can be repeated and experimented upon under controlled conditions. But the origin of the universe is not that sort of thing. It is one of a kind, and you cannot do science of extraordinary things. And this is why the standard scientific model for the origin of the universe today, the Big Bang Theory, does not answer the question of what caused the initial instant of creation. Scientists, as a philosopher or a theologian, may speculate about the answer, but science itself cannot provide the answer to this fundamental question. So now that we recognize that, we, that when we ask for the origin of all things, we are dealing with a fundamental spe speculative question within the realm of philosophy and theology, we know that there are really only two alternatives for the universe. Either the universe was, has always been there, 
and therefore is infinite and eternal, or it was created by something or someone else which itself must be eternal. Either way, our reflection guides us to conclude that there must be an ultimate uncreated ground of existence for everything there is. For if the universe is not a creature, then the answer to the question who created the universe would be no one. It has always been there, the cause of itself, or it came out of nothing, and therefore it must be nothing because out of nothing, nothing comes, so reality must be an illusion. The universe would then be the kind of thing which has no beginning and no explanation, necessarily being the cause of its own existence. But note that this makes the universe a sort of God. The ground of existence, the ground of ultimate reality, whatever that may be. You see, the quality of being the cause of one's own existence is a divine attribute. So there are not many other alternatives. Either the universe is God, or the universe was created by some other, and that one would have to be God, the necessary being the cause of its own existence and everything else. But what it is impossible is that there would not be a necessary being, an ultimate ground of existence, one who was not created but carries within himself the cause of its own existence, as we have said. Otherwise, we would have what in philosophy is called an infinite regress. If everything is created by something else, then you can always ask, but who created the creator? And who created the creator of the creator? And who created the creator of the creator of the creator? And then so on and on and on, and on all the way, forever and ever. But such an infinite series is impossible in reality. Imagine that you were climbing a ladder, step by step, but suddenly the beginning of that ladder disappears and is substituted by an infinite series of steps below. What is such a ladder standing upon? How could the step you are at be reached coming from below if an infinite series of steps has to be taken first? You see, it is not possible to get anywhere in such an infinite ladder because it would have no foundation. So, an infinite regress of cause and effect is impossible. Therefore, there must be a first cause, a ground of being, the cause of itself and of everything else. So, in conclusion, coming back to our original question, the short answer to the question, who created God, according to Christian theology and philosophy, is that God was not created. God is not a creature. The God of the Bible is the creator of all things. He is the ultimate ground of existence, of everything there is. He carries the cause of his own existence within himself. No one created him, because if he were created, then he would not be God. As Psalm 100 says, Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Summary. Who created us? God. Who created God? No one. Because God is not a creature. If someone or something had created him, that other thing 
would be God, but not him. But since he is God, he is the uncreated creator of all things. Well, so that's it. I hope you find this video helpful. And uh, if you have any other further question, uh, I would love to get to know you and talk to you more on this subject. So send your comment or question to the link below. Also remember to like and to share with others that might be uh, similarly interested in discussing these important fundamental questions of theology and philosophy. Well, thank you so much for listening and until next time, I say goodbye, the peace of Christ.